So, what about this war on women? I say it's fiction. Trying to overturn the Supreme Court decision uh, on Lilly Ledbetter last year. This legislation will kill jobs, not create jobs. I voted against it. That thing is a nuisance. It shouldn't be the law. Scott Walker back in Wisconsin tried to do away with the equal pay for women in Wisconsin. Your great governor, what a hero he is. Today's Senate vote on the Paycheck Fairness Act. Republicans helped scuttle it. Just one example of a larger election year pattern on the part of a very cynical GOP. Women in, in America make 82% of what men make. And woman unemployment is lower than men. So where is this war, this economic war on women? Where, where is this? House Republicans have to decide which is more important, protecting victims of domestic violence or advancing the harsh anti-gay and anti-immigrant sentiments of some of their parties far right. What I want to know is where are the women representing the tens of millions of women across the country who want and need insurance coverage for basic preventive health care services, including family planning. Republican candidates for the U.S. Senate all across the country are pushing extreme legislation that threatens health care for women. The left has a habit of demonizing people who disagree with them. She's having so much sex, it's amazing she can still walk. Maybe she have more boyfriends? They're lined up around the block. What does that make her? It makes her a slut, right? Makes her a prostitute. She wants to be paid to have sex. So, what about this war on women? I say it's fiction. I believe that abortion should be safe and legal in this country. I believe that since Roe v. Wade has been the law for 20 years, that we should sustain and support it. Do I believe the Supreme Court should overturn Roe v. Wade? Yes. I'm so happy to be here to make sure that my endorsement of Tom Corbett is heard loud and clear. And look at Pennsylvania Governor Tom Corbett catching some flack for defending a controversial bill. It would require women to have an ultrasound before going through an abortion. And the person doing that ultrasound would have to make sure that the woman can see it. Making them watch, does that go too far in your mind? I don't know how you make anybody watch, <clears throat> okay, because you just have to close your eyes. Back in my days, they used bare aspirin for contraceptives. The gals put it between their knees. Virginia Republicans have passed in both chambers a bill that would have the state government force Virginia women into having medically unnecessary, unwanted vaginal ultrasounds. There was also a personhood bill introduced in the Wisconsin legislature this session, thereby banning abortion and likely hormonal birth control as well. Doctors who fail to follow the bill exactly could face felony charges. They could go to prison. The legislature also passed a bill banning private insurance plans that are part of health insurance exchanges from covering abortion. A bill that would remove information on contraception from sex ed curriculum in the state and requiring schools to teach abstinence as the only way to prevent pregnancy and STDs. The Democrats is they have invented this phony war on women. Mississippi's personhood amendment is part of a national movement to restrict a woman's ability to obtain a legal abortion. Mississippi has the highest rate of teen unwanted pregnancies. Uh, there were 55 teen births per 1,000 teens. That is a pretty high number and that's over 60 percent above the U.S. average. Mississippi leads the nation when it comes to STDs. They have the highest rates of chlamydia and gonorrhea. So way to go Mississippi, you're number one. This week lawmakers in New Hampshire will vote on a bill requiring pregnant women to wait 24 hours for an abortion. The health exception is a loophole wide enough to drive a Mack truck through it. The health exception would render this ban virtually meaningless. Planned Parenthood is in business basically to do two things. To provide birth control mechanisms to poor people and to provide abortions to anybody who wants them. They passed a budget eliminating state and federal funding for Planned Parenthood clinics. If you want an abortion, you go to Planned Parenthood, and that's well over 90% of what Planned Parenthood does. It's exactly the opposite. 97% is comprehensive health care for women. 3% is abortion services. The continued misleading attacks on Planned Parenthood expose a cynical and cold-hearted willingness to further a divisive political agenda, even if it will deny women access to life-saving cancer screenings and birth control. We also should cut out spending for Title X. That's Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood. We're going to get rid of that. The Republican Party is waging a war against women. So much. This is so bogus. What about in the case of rape? Should it be legal or not? From what I understand from doctors, that's really rare. If it's a legitimate rape, 
uh, the female body has ways to try to shut that whole thing down. The doctor who first espoused Aiken's controversial rape theory and used to head the National Right to Life Committee is a man the Romney campaign called an important surrogate for him the last time Romney ran for president. Paul Ryan, along with Aiken, co-sponsored the Sanctity of Human Life Act. It's a so-called personhood amendment. And he did so as recently as 2011. Now that bill made no exceptions for rape or incest or anything else. A record that includes votes to prohibit abortions for women who have been raped or are victims of incest. I'm proud of my pro-life record. And I stand by my pro-life record in Congress. It's something I'm proud of. Delegates in Florida were voting today to include strong anti-abortion language in the party platform to be presented in Tampa next week. There are no exceptions included for rape or incest. Would you have supported the constitutional amendment that would have established the definition of life at conception? Absolutely. You know, if the Democrats said we had a war on caterpillars, then every mainstream media all that talked about the fact that Republicans have a war on caterpillars, then we'd have problems with caterpillars. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is it's a fiction. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is it's a fiction. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is it's a fiction. It's a fiction. We are engaged in a cultural struggle with a secular elite that believes that life is random and has no moral meaning. And the whole reasoning behind Roe versus Wade is a utilitarian, phony science reasoning. You should all f***ing die. F***ing bomb that projected bitch. That's the sound of domestic terrorism. A voicemail left on a Texas abortion clinic's voicemail last month. Is an abortion clinic bomber a, a terrorist under this definition? Governor? I, I don't know if you're going to use the word terrorist there. May the power of God be with you as you aim that rifle and as you lay it down just like that and you look along those sights and you squeeze that trigger. You're squeezing that trigger for Almighty God. If you aren't already familiar with the Army of God, on their website right now, there's a picture of Dr. George Tiller just moments after he was murdered under the headline, The lives of innocent babies scheduled to be murdered by George Tiller are spared by the action of American hero Scott Roeder. George Tiller, the baby killer, reaped what he sowed and is now in eternal hell. Tiller, the baby killer. The abortion is a mass murderer, and he may be stopped even by killing him. So we have the Army of God, which in the future will organize and coalesce like those in Europe who have centuries of underground work and there will be uh, uh, skilled assassins and skilled saboteurs after the abortion industry, which is not only the abortionists, but the people on top of them, including Supreme Court judges. Now, Paul Hill has called for Supreme Court judges to be killed and also for chemical and biological weapons, and we support this call. The left, I mean, it's this culture of death. Yeah. Not that I would consider yeah. killing a, a, an abortionist foolish in and of itself right. but i would only want you to do it in such a way that you would not be apprehended right. while you're doing go it. off ha ha right. talk. and that yeah. you would do it in a in a soldierly manner uh, and get away with it march 10th 1993 dr david gunn of pensacola florida was fairly shot during a protest he had been the subject of one it style posters distributed by operation rescue July 29th, 1994, Dr. John Britton and James Barrett, a clinic escort, were both shot dead outside another facility, the Lady Center in Pensacola, Florida. Reverend Paul Jennings Hill was charged with the killings. So, what about this war on women? I say it's fiction. January 29th, 1998. Robert Sanderson, an off-duty police officer who worked as a security guard at an abortion clinic in Birmingham, Alabama was killed when his workplace was bombed. Eric Robert Rudolph, who was also responsible for the 1996 Centennial Olympic Park bombing, was charged with the crime. May 31, 2009. George Tiller, a physician from Wichita, Kansas, who was nationally known for being one of the few doctors in the United States to perform late-term abortions, was shot and killed by Scott Roeder, an anti-abortion activist. Who's the good guys? We're yeah. the good guys, and the good guys are always outnumbered, and they always win. I don't agree with all the people who support me. My guess is they don't all agree with everything I, I believe in, but I need to get 50.1% or more. 
and I'm uh, appreciative to have the help of a lot of good people. A lot of good people. A lot of good people.